G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, Friday morning here in Australia, market cap uh, in total is up a little bit, 3.2%. But we do have the weekend coming, so we need to, you know, be mindful of that, that there's generally a retracement some stage over the weekend. Now, not always, there are weekends where you don't have a retracement and it just continues to go up. And look, maybe with the Miami Bitcoin conference going on this weekend, that could be the case, but you know, maybe not as well. Again, traditionally, there is a pullback at some stage. So, you know, it's good that the market cap is up, not by too much, but still we're up to, you know, $1.8 trillion, getting back towards that $2 trillion mark, but we're not out of the woods yet, you know. There's still a possibility that we are now actually in a bear market. Again, I've said this before, I don't think we are, but we just need to keep that in mind that we could be, and this could be a bit of a fake out before we see more downside. Anyway, we'll get on to that. Let's have a look. Bitcoin dominance, 40%, so holding pretty nicely there, down a little bit, it was 41%. And ETH dominance up a little bit, so 18%. And GUI, 17 Oof, We haven't seen these prices in a really, really long time. All right, so again, the market in general is up 3.2%, so we can see a fair bit of green there. So what's done really well? What's done the best out of the top 100? Let's have a look. Right, Filecoin, nice, making a good move back. The Graph, nice. Uh, Solana, Telcoin, Theta Network. Look, there's a lot of coins that are kind of 15% thereabouts uh, and above. So that's really, really nice. Cosmos, again, Pirate Chain. I've found out that this apparently is a private, a privacy coin, so at least I know that much about it. But I just can't trust anything with these meme kind of names. Hedera Hashgraph. So look, some nice gains there. What about losses though? Has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Dogecoin down a little bit, so down to 40%, but still up 13.7% 30, for the week. Uh, SafeMoon uh, going down. Decred Helium down a little bit. Uh, Polygon uh, down over the week, but starting to move back up again. But look, after that, it's all just sort of stable coins. So again, not really too many losses and some okay gains. Nothing kind of too crazy though. Hence why the total market cap is only up 3.2%. So edging its way up. But again, we have the weekend, so we definitely could lose that and some. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe the Bitcoin Miami conference uh, is going to kick something off. Let's go and have a look at the chart. Now we can see on the Bitcoin daily chart, that we actually have broken out of this downwards uh, descending, uh, you know, descending action, you know, and we've got this little kind of wedge happening here. Now, again, this could be a bear flag. So again, this is what bear flags look like. But at the moment, we have broken out, but we've still got a little bit to go. So there's still an hour and 20 minutes uh, for the close of the day. So this could easily turn around and close back inside here. And then maybe again we start to fall down. But at the moment, it's just holding above. So we'll have to wait and see. Now again, I don't think we're in a bear market yet, but I'm, I haven't completely ruled it out. This could be just some sideways consolidation for a while. Because at the moment, this isn't exactly a, a big push out. Now we could sort of close out here. And then tomorrow and over the weekend, we come back and retest this out here before we make our next move up. Or... Again, there's three options. Look, we go up, we go down, we go sideways. But really, I'm expecting that, you know, we probably break out of here, come back and retest this a few times before we kind of maybe slowly start to make our way up. But I really do think we're probably going to get some sideways action for a while with fake outs to both the upside, getting people excited, and then to the downside, and just wrecking both longs and shorts before we finally build up enough, you know, steam to you know, really start to make some moves upwards. But I'm not ruling out that we may be in a bear market. Again, I don't think we are, but I'm just keeping an eye out. So for me, I really expect sideways action to happen. And again, you know, some sort of big moves up and sort of some big moves down to shake people out. And that could go on for weeks or even months. And when I say months, I don't think we're gonna do it until you know, October, November or something. I think maybe you know, July, August, we will really start to see things change. But again, I'm just not ruling out that we might be in a bear market. I just don't think we are. Again, we're still within this channel here. And we've been in this channel for quite some time. So until we break out of the channel, 
then I'm not too worried. And again, this sideways action could be sort of stuff like this where we just, we make our way up a little bit, but we still just travel along the bottom of this channel. And as long as we're doing that, I continue to remain bullish. And again, even if we break out of it just to the low side and travel under it, but we're still kind of making our way upwards, then I'll remain bullish. It's if we break out and start to continue to make lower lows and lower lows, that's when I'll remain bearish. But really, sideways action outside of this again. So even if we're not traveling completely under this channel, just going sideways, I'm still bullish. Sideways is accumulation. Uh, but you know, somewhat sometimes it can lead to the low side. But we'll have to wait and see anyway. Again, I'm not offering your financial advice, I'm just giving you my personal opinion. All right, lots of interesting news. So let's move on to that. Right, data shows Binance Smart Chain dApps lost $167 million last month from flash loan attacks. So as good as Binance Smart Chain is, they've had a lot of issues with the dApps running on it, rug pulls and all sorts of things. So the Binance Smart Chain, decentralized application, have been hit with a number of flash loan attacks in recent weeks. So it means that they're not really doing their due diligence due diligence and having them checked and you know uh, code reviewed and all the rest of it because they have been hacked a number of times and there has been a couple excuse me of just straight up rug pulls so according to uh, collected data by rect i think that's rec capital during the last 30 days binance smart chain has lost 167 million so again with all these new DeFi platforms that are coming out and things like that i'm just being extremely extremely cautious with that kind of stuff you know, a lot of them are just coming out and they just want to get on this DeFi hype train. They're, they're, they're here for the money and they're not really here to kind of change things. And so I've invested in mainly older ones that have been around and particularly have been through a bear market. Uh, and I've got some stories here that I will talk about and they're already preparing for the next bear market. Whereas a lot of these new ones, they're just in it for the money and they're going to try and ride these prices uh, as high as they can. And then when the bear market comes, they're not going to have the money left over. They're going to have spent it on themselves and all the rest of it and probably won't last. Now, again, I'm not naming any particular, you know, DeFi things or not even DeFi, just cryptos in general. This is what happened in 2017 when the bear bull market was on. There was just project after project after project coming out with all these promises. And then as soon as the bear market came, they were gone. You just never heard from them again. Uh, they're basically dead chains. So, you know, buyer beware. All right. This I find very interesting. So Ron Paul wants Bitcoin totally legalized to compete with the dollar and to let the people decide. I sort of like this now, you know, free markets, they have their upsides and their downsides. So we still need to be careful uh, that because, you know, then other coins will want, you know, exactly the same. I'm, I like the idea of Bitcoin being completely legalized because we know it's decentralized. It's, you know, it's foolproof at the moment. There's nothing to say that it's uh, not going to be around for another 10, 30, 40, 50 years. And again, most fiat systems, they generally only last about 100 years. So, you know, the dollars kind of run its sort of race. It's nearly at 100 years and Bitcoin's still very early. So we would say at the very least, it would probably have about another 90 years to go before, you know, maybe something could supersede it. But what he says is he says that he wants to legalize the dollar's competition, including Bitcoin, and let the people decide which money to use, not the government. Freedom of choice will sort it out. I kind of like that. I'm, I'm in a grants. All right, institutions gobbling up Cardano and two additional altcoins during the crypto market plunge. So digital asset manager CoinShare says institutional investors are buying Cardano, XRP and Polkadot. So, uh, very, very interesting that, you know, and it's, you've got to take all this with a grain of salt because sometimes these are, you know, paid for, uh, you know, by certain companies to write these kind of things because exactly, they have bought these and now they want everyone else to jump in on top so they can sell them and, you know, make some profit and make their money back and things like that. So just, yeah, buyer beware, but interesting that they are buying up these coins. That kind of says something. Right, Curve sees a 150% rebound as DeFi bottoms and ETH gas prices drop. I showed before, gas prices, 15. That is super low. We haven't seen it like that since it's been months, months and months. So falling Ethereum gas fees, the launch of uh, Convex Finance and the DeFi sector reaching a potential bottom back CRVs. Uh, impressive 150% rally since May the 23rd. I mean, that's you know, two weeks ago, really, 
uh, and you've seen those kind of gains. So, But that's if you're lucky enough to buy the very, very bottom. Almost no one buys the very, very bottom. So there's not too many people who've really seen this 150%. It's more like people have just made some uh, percentages back from what they actually lost because a lot of people probably bought a lot higher. But anyway, it's good to see there's going to be some lucky people that have basically been able to take advantage of this. So congratulations to them. And I do think we still have, you know, that DeFi summer to come. But you know, there's no guarantees in life. Now, here's the story I was talking about. DAOs are preparing for the next crypto winter with treasury diversification. So the good companies that have been around these DeFi projects that have already been through a bear, you know, a bear winter, uh, you know, a bear market, bear winter, whatever you want to call it, they are actually selling their coins off. Uh, not all of them; they're not selling all of them, so don't you know panic. And they've already done this. This is kind of sort of you know old news that is now coming to light. Now, I mean, not completely, but anyway, they're selling off some of their governance coins and turning them into stable coins to help them make it through the winter, so they can you know just get the staking rewards, um, well, not staking rewards because they've got their DAOs do the staking rewards, but they are getting some cash. And so they are going to yeah, use that cash to help them get through, you know, the next four years. And that's not to say that they think it's coming right now, but, you know, they've made deals like Synthetics Network. Uh, they sold off some coins a while ago. Uh, where is it? Synthetics Network. Here we go. So the trend started with Synthetics in February. So this is already a couple of months old when it's Dow announced that it had sold 12 million in its SNX token to Paradigm Coinbase Ventures and IOSG. So they've taken that uh, those coins, sold them, $12 million dollars. Uh, with the SNX and they sold it at an even cheaper price than market price but they have taken that money and then they're now going to put that money into smart contracts to you know make a yield for them to help them get through to the next market so synthetics founder Kane Warwick explained via email that they did not need to take a full Dow vote to make the deal because synthetics has a multi-sig of three people empowered to make these deals along these lines now long a lot of people are probably thinking that that means that they're not decentralized they are decentralized and they're becoming more decentralized just at the time they didn't need it. And so he says they're working on an improvement that will remove this uh, discretionary power very, very soon. Uh, so that's the way things are. All of them are like that, you know, except for Bitcoin, really. That's the only one that's, you know, truly decentralized. Uh, and don't go thinking that, you know, Synthetics is the only one like this. A number of other companies all followed suit. It wasn't just the same. So, uh, you know, they talk about Mana uh, doing things like this. Pull Together have also done the same thing. Uh, there's a whole stack of uh, projects that have done it. It's not just DeFi. Uh, it's anything with staking in that. They need money to get through, so they have sold some off to big VCs. All right, Coinbase. So we heard that they're uh, you know, releasing Dogecoin. So Coinbase users will be eligible to sign up for a Dogecoin sweepstakes in the coming days. So they're giving away $1.2 million worth of Dogecoin uh, to the Coinbase users. You've got to sign up for it and things like that. But it seems like Dogecoin is, excuse me, you know, the people have kind of decided that it's going to be legit. Does it have long-term value? We'll have to wait and see. But in the short term, the people have decided. All right, so NFTs coming to the Olympics. The International Olympic Committee to launch official NFT pinups for upcoming games. So that would be the Tokyo Games, I would say. The International Olympic Committee, IOC, the NGO that organises the Summer and Winter Olympic Games, and video developer uh, Enway will launch a collection of non-fungible tokens that represent collectible Olympic pins. So again, this space just continues to get bigger. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what platform they're using. Um, you know, they've got Enway uh, is the video game developer. Uh, yeah, I, I wonder, you know, whether they're going to go Chili's or maybe Engine or Wax or you know, something else, but this NFT space just continues to grow. I really do think it is <laughs> going to revolutionize the way, you know, people have collectibles and things like that. Because the thing you need to remember is, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, but you don't have anything you can actually hold. These days, a lot of these NFT collectibles come with something tangible as well. Like you can get a pair of shoes that come with the NFT or, you know, a hat or a statue or figurine or something like that. They're not just simply that's, something that's digital there's also something uh, physical that comes with it uh, and those physical things are limited editions as well 
All right, so Miami's uh, mayor, if you hadn't heard, that he went out and bought a whole stack of Bitcoin and ETH. So he bought Bitcoin below 40,000, so he's probably in a little bit of a loss at the moment, but he got ETH at 1.5K, so he'd be well in profit there. And he's revealing that he's planning to buy the dip at the moment as well. So again, I think it was 1% of uh, Miami's total uh, treasury was put into Bitcoin and Ethereum, so nothing too crazy. And look, over the next few years, that might actually lose some if we are already in a bear market. But if we aren't, then they're probably going to take some, make some pretty uh, good profits uh, to, you know, help with Miami uh, and its treasuries and, you know, funding all sorts of things. And I think you're going to see lots of other governments follow suit. They just might not do it now. But, you know, if Miami does really, really well and then, you know, sells some of it, you know, uh, to get themselves through the uh, next bear market and buys in again and other, you know, governments see that, then they're going to follow suit. It's just whether they're going to do it now or not really is the, the big question. All right, last but not least, cybersecurity, Norton LifeLock, so that used to be just Norton, but now it's not Norton LifeLock, will add Ethereum mining services. So the, ant the antivirus firm Norton LifeLock will allow its more than 13 million users to mine Ethereum on its platform. So this seems a little bit more gimmicky uh, than sort of anything because Ethereum is moving to 2.0 and staking. And so, you know, I don't know how long you're going to be able to more, excuse me, mine Ethereum for and whether there's any use for, you know, Ethereum sort of mining after that. I'm not really sure. So again... I feel this is more gimmicky than anything, but, you know, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I think you're going to see lots of things. I mean, there was an ad the other day about a car that's going to, you know, mine cryptocurrencies for you while it was in park uh, and things like that. Again, I think that's all gimmicky sort of stuff at the moment, but that's not to say in the future they won't actually have things like that. You know, your, like your house, you know, there's some kind of thing you can put in that uh, will mine yeah, certain cryptocurrencies for you. Uh, at, at certain times, you know, when you're using electricity and when you're not using electricity, then it possibly doesn't. I don't know, but I do think things like that will come in the future. I just think a lot of the ones we see at the moment are more gimmicky than anything else. All right, that's it for me. Like I said, you know, it is Friday here, so I'm watching for the retracement. You know, do we have one? Last time they had Bitcoin, um, I don't know if it was Bitcoin Miami, but a Bitcoin conference, they had a really big pump, but then it basically fell back a few days later to the prices it was at before it even started. So, you know, again, I think there's going to be fake outs to the upside and the downside, and I'm expecting more sideways action than any more real action to the upside or the downside. But I am watching for the downside. Again, we could be in a bear market. I don't think we are but it's definitely possible. Look, let me know down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think we're still in a bull market or do you think uh, we're in a bear market and this is kind of the fake out before we see uh, much lower prices? All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train at the moment. There was some small gains there to be made and so that's good and I'll see you next time.